Today we've got a nice little experiment and we're preparing sodium thiosulfate, a useful compound to have around the lab. Thiosulfate is a bit like sulfate, only with one of the four oxygen atoms having been replaced with a sulfur atom. In theory it's easy to make, so let's have a go. Here's our lineup of ingredients for the reaction. First of all here's 30 grams of sodium bisulfite. Just a fine white powder with a faint aroma of sulfur dioxide. If you've got metabisulfite for home brewing then this should also work. Just make sure you recalculate moles correctly using the right molecular weight. Ok next up is our source of additional sulfur, so we've got 11.1 grams of elemental sulfur here and this is going to be a 20% molar excess in order to ensure reaction is complete. It's less SODC than the metabisulfite is, but still available if you look carefully. And finally we've got sodium hydroxide, 11.5 grams of it here which is stoichiometric with the sodium bisulfite. Basically the sodium hydroxide is going to react with the sodium bisulfite and form sodium sulfite. Then the sodium sulfite is going to react with the sulfur sucking up an extra sulfur atom, forming sodium thiosulfate. We're going to do the reaction using 70 ml of water, so we've also measured this out ready. So here's the lineup. In principle this could be a nice bit of home chemistry as all the reagents here are ODC. So let's see. So we've got the sodium bisulfite in a 250 ml beaker and this is on a hot plate stirrer. We'll place a stir bar in here. And first we'll add the 70 ml of water and commence stirring gently. Looks like an inquisitive ant didn't make it. We'll get the heating going on our rather battered but still going hot plate. The bisulfite goes into solution pretty quickly. So now we add the sodium hydroxide, which should form our sodium sulfite. The sodium hydroxide dissolves and you can see the mixture getting pretty hot as it does so and reacts to form the salt. The sodium sulfite is less soluble so we've got some white colored solid now suspended in the mixture. To stop the sulfur being a bit hydrophobic and clumping when we add it we're first going to wet it with about 5 mL of absolute ethanol. This step might not be essential, and who knows maybe you could try using vodka instead. Ok we've got a paste of sulfur now. So let's start adding it. Nothing exciting happens, the sulfur just goes into suspension together with the sulfite. So we'll add the rest now. Ok here we go. We're now going to heat the mixture up to nearly boiling point, and stir there for a while. We notice that the color starts to change after about 20 minutes of heating. It starts to become more yellow in color, and then slightly orange. Here's the mixture after about 45 minutes. We'll explain later what we think might be going on here, but sodium thiosulfate isn't orange colored. After an hour and a half of heating and stirring we stop the reaction. A fine sulfur precipitate in a red colored liquid, and the volume has reduced down with the heating to around 75 ml in total. We filter this while it's still hot.
a couple of mils of water just to wash the sulfur in the filter. Well interestingly as you can see the liquid turned a lighter orange color as it cooled down, and it has become slightly opaque. We'll deal with the filtrate in a moment. First we're going to wash and dry the sulfur on the filter and see how much remains. Here's some absolute ethanol. After careful drying we're left with 1.3 grams of this grey colored residual sulfur. This is interesting because in theory we had a 20% excess which should have given us about 1.8 grams remaining. So a side reaction has occurred to consume some of the sulfur. But it is a good sign that we've had a reaction occur, so let's work up the filtrate. It's slightly opaque as you can see. So first up we're going to filter this again and see if we can start with a nice clear solution of products. It's also pretty viscous as it contains a lot of salts. That took about 40 minutes to filter believe it or not. Pretty slow with the viscosity. But the good news is that we've got a nice clear solution which will now cover up and chill in order to see if we can get any crystals forming. So we put this in the freezer and wait. And I guess we got lucky because apparently this can be hard to crystallize. But we've got a beaker full of crystals here after just a few hours of chilling. So let's filter. It was slow, but we've got the crystals out and we've saved the filtrate. The product is still a yellow color and has a slightly bad sulfur smell to it, so we figured we'd experiment and see if we could clear this up. Here's a little test using some absolute ethanol in a beaker. The yellow color does seem to wash out in the ethanol, without dissolving the crystals. So let's try this on the product in the filter. Color looks like it's coming out. But there's a side effect. The nice crystals we had appear to be changing form in the ethanol, very likely dehydrating as the water is sucked out. So we may as well go all the way with this and wash with more ethanol to see if we can get a decent product. And here's what we end up with after a few ethanol washes. The crystals break down into a fine powder. Not all of the yellow color is gone, and there's still a pale yellow tint there but the unpleasant sulfide aroma has gone. We've got 22.1 grams of product which is our crude sodium thiosulfate. This normally forms big glassy crystals of the pentahydrate salt, but these were dehydrated by the ethanol wash. If what we've got here is the anhydrous salt then the yield is 49% on starting sodium bisulfite. In reality this is probably still slightly hydrated. What we think happened in the reaction is that our starting bisulfite may have decomposed a bit over time, forming sodium sulfite. 
This in turn meant that we were using slightly too much sodium hydroxide, and in contact with sulfur this dissolved it forming orange and red colored polysulfide salts. We got a new lens so we'll now be doing X-rated close-up macro shots from time to time. Ok let's do a classic test for thiosulfate. Let's dissolve the product in a little cold water. Very soluble and no residue. Here's some dilute sulfuric acid. To begin with nothing seems to happen. But then a milkiness appears and grows stronger. And after a minute there's a strong precipitate of yellow sulfur. Thiosulfuric acid is formed as an intermediate species, but this is unstable in contact with water, and breaks down to form elemental sulfur again. After chilling the remaining filtrate, we got another batch of crystals forming overnight as you can see here. After filtering and ethanol washing again, we've got another 3 grams of crude product although slightly more discolored than the first batch. In total that's 25.1 grams of crude product, which in theory is a 55% yield if in best case this is the anhydrous salt. So we may have discovered the reason why the textbook preps for this don't typically begin with sodium bisulfite. Even storing this in a sealed container for a while eventually results in some decomposition and the consequence is that it becomes hard to get the stoichiometry of this reaction right, and gives side products which then make purifying the crude product much more difficult. But you can recrystallize the product using boiling water. It doesn't take much before you get a nice saturated solution and this stays super saturated on cooling for a lit while. Again, we recommend that you chill this in the freezer, or leave it out in a crystallizing dish for a while if you want those bigger glass-like crystals that this compound is famous for. Bada bing bada boom! Nice clear glass-like crystals of pure product. So another interesting reaction, and we learned something useful. As always, thanks for watching, for putting up with my voice, and stay tuned for more reactions.